and welcome to episode 3 of Project Stug. In the last episode, you have seen how I designed and built the Commander's Cupola, as well as adding the weld seams to the fighting compartment of the Stug. So far, progress has been fairly straightforward, with no major issues to resolve, until now. The main gun on the Stug poses one major problem. Unlike most tanks where the gun can be easily painted separately from the turret, a fair portion of the Stug's primary weapon is visible entering the fighting compartment. To make this even more of a problem, the armoured cheeks severely restrict access from the front. There are a number of solutions to this problem. All have their advantages and disadvantages. In this episode, you'll see my solution. It's not perfect, and it has issues, but it works. Mostly. Before I committed to starting Project Stug, I made sure I had a route to resolve any of the major problems with this project. One of these was creating the muzzle brake and barrel. I wanted to get these parts turned in aluminium and brass. So, I prepared a set of drawings for the parts in my design software. I could have 3D printed these parts, but as they were vulnerable, I decided to try and get them turned. Fortunately, one of the members of my model club was a toolmaker and kindly agreed to help me out. Thanks, Barry. I got this particular ball rolling many months ago and was delighted when I got the call to pick up my parts. They were perfect and went together like a dream. This was a massive relief. I was absolutely thrilled with the result. Meanwhile, i had been working out exactly how to make the other end of the gun and get my head around how I was going to fit it in the fighting compartment. I had a pretty good idea and a few options, but it wasn't until I had something physical I could find out exactly what was going to work. All these parts would be 3D printed in ABS, just like the rest of the Stug. I imported the parts individually into the slicer software to prepare them for printing on my Ultimaker 3D printer. This is the Salkopf being prepared. It is printed as a solid part, as I have a bit of reprofiling with a file to do and don't want to create any holes. As such, it took almost a day to print and weighs a ton. The horn at the top is sacrificial and increases the size of the top layers to prevent heat building up too quickly and making a mess of the end of the part. It's easy to file off when the prints cool down. And these are the 3D printed parts for the rear of the gun. The main breech and recoil suppressors, the brackets for the Salkopf, and the mainframes to carry the gun. I'm using a 3mm brass rod to recreate the pivot onto which the parts are mounted. The gun won't be poseable, just fixed in place. I'll probably fit the transport mount on the front of the hull to the barrel eventually. With the Salkopf cleaned up, filled and filed, you can see how it fits tightly onto the back end of the gun. Leaving the Salkopf brackets loose ensures they always fit at the right angle when the Salkopf is pushed on. To try and fit the main gun into the fighting compartment, I broke out the Dremel and made some minor modifications. I opened up the front to the correct size, although I have to fill the notch in at the bottom edge. Then I cut out most of the base plate and a fair chunk of the internal supports. Now the gun should easily just fit into place. Still, if it won't go in from the front, it's bound to go in from the back. Oh dear, that didn't go well. Don't worry, I do have a plan B, but more on that later. For a little light relief, let's do some detailing. I 3D printed a strip of numbers to add the serial casting on the Salkopf. These were checked against actual examples and then just super glued into place. I think they look pretty good. Next I added the hardware to the Salkopf brackets. These nuts and bolts were from Prime Miniatures. There's a link to their site in the description. They were a bit fiddly to install, but they had a nice bit of detail. I'm at the stage where I need to get really specific on a time of manufacture of my Stug. Modifications to Stug production came and went, so it's important not to have the wrong part on for the wrong period. 
Of course, spares were harvested from other vehicles, which does mix things up a bit, but there are good records in these Stug books of what was used and when. For all the features I want, I'm looking at a Stug made in about late September 1944. This will allow me to have Zimmerit, three-tone camouflage, the remote MG34 and Schürzen. Here's a photo of a Stug showing what I'm aiming for. Exactly what period it will be finished in, I'm still undecided. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Now to break out my new favourite material, Mr. Surfacer 500. This wonder product is great for adding a cast texture to parts, in this case the Saukopf. I used a cheap disposable brush and just stippled it on. After a couple of layers, I got the effect I was after. I also used it to add some cast texture to the inside of the muzzle brake, which by this time I'd added some extra detail to. The keyways for the locking spanners, as well as the locking bolt that goes in the top. I also added some threaded detail to the end of the barrel with a sharp needle file. The barrel and Salkopf were now complete. I even added some hooks for the canvas cover to the back of the Salkopf and a little more texturing. These were just cut from some brass rod I flattened out with a hammer, then filed, trimmed and glued into place. Now, let's see if I can get the gun into the fighting compartment without the Salkopf. I've textured up the rest of the parts based on photos. Now I just have to keep my fingers crossed. Obviously not while I'm doing this, that would be silly. It is a bit of a juggle, but it does go in. I'll have to paint this unit separately and install it before I permanently fix the fighting compartment to the upper hull. Well, that is a big relief. It's in and it looks good. Now, let's see if I can get the Salkopf to fit. Fortunately, I can get it past the cheeks and push fit it onto the gun. A closing plate fits above the gun to provide armour protection and support the other side of the canvas cover. I may add the canvas, maybe just its remains from battle damage. I'd like to keep this as open as possible to see more of the detail. It's another major stage on Project Stug completed, but there are plenty more challenges still to come. It's always a challenge when you not only have to work out how to put the parts together, but also how to make them and get them historically correct. This is something that will really put me to the test in the next episode of Project Stug. I'm going to try and recreate the remotely operated MG34 in front of the loader's hatch. This is a highly detailed part of the Stug and poses many challenges. The real thing was aimed, moved and fired from within the fighting compartment. Mine will be fixed, but first I've got to try and work out how it's made and then how to recreate it. I've already made a start by 3D modelling the MG34 in my CAD software. I think this will be the easy part, as I now have to recreate the mount and all the associated brackets and linkages. These are some images of the MG34 rendered in my software from the model I've created. The finished gun will be about 93mm or 3.7 inches long, so it'll make a nice size piece and hopefully look good on the Stug. I think most of these parts are going to be fairly delicate. I'll 3D print them and then mould and cast them in metal. You can explore in more depth the techniques I use to do this in my popular how-to series. But that'll have to wait until the next episode of Project Stug. I hope you're enjoying Project Stug. If you are, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you find interesting. These range from my Staples and Vine models, featured in Sarah's vlog, to short projects like the T80. If you have any questions about Project Stug, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. 
Thanks for watching.